Thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Mike Thompson, and you've just tuned in to The Father Show. Today, we will be talking about what makes for an effective communication. And communication is one of the top three reasons a marriage would end in divorce. And our guest today is Mr. Al Ray from Marriage Team, a nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering couples for a winning marriage. And he's the author of Rick and Jane, Learn to Listen and Talk. Al, Thank you for joining us here on the Father Show. Can you, oh, let's switch over here. There we go. Thank you for joining us today, Al. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Mike, and thanks for having me. Good. The, uh, well, I, just one point, the uh, book was actually authored by my wife and I. She's a partner in this whole uh, ministry that we do. So um, I like to give her, make sure she gets full credit. Yes, and we want you to go home smiling and her smiling when you get there. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization, Marriage Team. Yeah, um, we're a, a nonprofit and we equip uh, Christian couples. We're a faith-based organization. We equip, equip Christian couples to be marriage coaches. And then we run a coaching program where people who want help with their with their marriage or premarital counseling can call and they can be assigned with a coach couple to work with them for roughly 12 weeks. Um, and it's been a, a very effective program for many, many folks. Good. Yeah, and, and I understand that I was reading a little information about it and I think it was like 89% of the couples that go through the program actually uh, stay in the marriage. That's correct. Yeah, good research, uh, Mike. But couples that come to us have talked about divorce or in some stage of separation. And of those, 89% uh, uh, decide to stay together after completing the program. That's excellent. Congratulations for you well, and your wife. That's a, That's a great thing. Well, actually, we, we have a lot of coach couples, and uh, it's really congratulations to them uh, and the good work that they do. It isn't just uh, the two of us. Okay. Now, how many coach uh, coaching do you have? Yeah, there's about 150 active coach couples. Okay. So uh, um, we've uh, got quite a few folks. Uh, most of them are in the Northwest, but we have them uh, some in other states as well. Mm -hmm. oh, good. So we're going to be talking about communication and we all know that's important. We also know that that's not a really priority thing for men to do. We're not really good at it. We don't really like to do it. But how important is communication in really in any type of a relationship? Yeah, it, it is huge. And when you think about it, it's really what makes a relationship. If you're not communicating with somebody, you're not in relationship with them. And right. um, you you accurately said that it's one of the top three reasons couples uh, cite for getting divorced is that they have, uh, they're, they're failing to communicate. And we think we know how to do it because we've talked or listened all our lives. But in actuality, um, you know, we're probably not doing it nearly as well as we think we are. Mm hmm. Yeah. And being that a lack of communication uh, is one of the three top three reasons for divorce. What are some better ways for a man to communicate? That's a great question. And we really spend a lot of time in the first couple of coaching sessions talking about communications. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, and there's two job descriptions associated with communicating. There's the speaker and there's the listener. And each one has a job to do. And when they do their job well, communication goes well. We like to focus first on the listener because that is, we believe, the probably the most important skill. Um, when you think about customer service people, they're taught to listen well. If you have an irate customer come in, mm -hmm. um, you listen to them and you make sure that they feel understood. 
when they feel understood, then they're ready to solve the problem and you can start to work out the details. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in a, in a marriage or a relationship. We fight for understanding, but once we feel understood, it's all just a breath of relief, a sigh of relief, and you can get on with the rest of the communication and resolving the issues. So the number one thing for the listener in their job description is to listen to understand. Their primary job is to make sure that the speaker feels understood. And um, that sounds easy, but often we don't listen to understand. Uh, we listen to refute. We listen to be defensive. There are a lot of ways that we listen, and we don't really hear and understand what the person's trying to communicate to us. And does it, doesn't it, uh, or isn't it true that when men communicate, or I should say, let me put it this way, when women come to you with a problem, or they want to tell you about the day, or communicate to the, what their day was like, does it necessarily mean that we need to respond? Because men are generally, you know, we want to solve it. We want to uh, protect the wife and what have you. But isn't that really kind of the opposite of what a woman is looking for? I, I think so. And, uh, you know, that's certainly what my wife tells me. You know, she, just <laughs> to, she just wants me to listen to understand, you know, and show a little bit, a bit of empathy with her day. Um, mm. And, you know, when I think about it, when I get into the fix it mode, it's like I'm the dad and I'm fixing it for the kids. You know, I'm fixing their bike, I'm fixing whatever, you know, I'm taking care of the situation. And, you know, you've got a wife that's a grown woman and she doesn't want to feel like she's being manipulated like a kid um, mm. or she's being taken care of in the same way. Um, so, yeah, listening to understand is huge. Okay. So how, do, how could you convey understanding without agreeing? Oh. And you, Mike, that was so important to make that distinction because I think a lot of people think that, that understanding means agreeing. And we'll actually coach people and they have a difficult time understanding it's because they basically do not agree with what the person's saying. And they think if they convey understanding that all of a sudden the person's going to think that they agree with them. Mm -hmm. So that is a key element is you do not have to agree. But think about it. <clears throat> the only way that I know, the only way that you know that I understand what you've told me is if I tell you back. So if I say, <clears throat> Mike, you just, you just shared that, um, that poor communication is the cause of um, one of the top three causes of divorce. Did I get that right? And you can say, yeah, you got that right. You, you now know what I heard, heard you intended me. Do I understand you? But if I just say, yeah, I got that, then you don't know what I really got. So okay. it's really important for a person to reflect back what they're hearing so the speaker knows that they're really understood. And oftentimes people will parrot back the words that they hear. Mm -hmm. But that's sort of listening 101. If you want to get to the 201 or, or graduate level of listening, it's really talking about the feelings that go as, along with that. So, for instance, the feelings would be, so you just, you just told me that you really had a terrible, lousy, rotten day. Did I get that right? Yeah, I got that right. But if I want to go a little bit deeper, I might say, and you're feeling now really dejected, like you wish the day had never started, and you just want to crawl in and, and uh, about the whole day. Did I get that right? So th now that I have talked about the feelings and what's going on with that, then you, they really know that I'm not only understanding the situation, but I'm also understanding the impact that it had. And it's that deeper level of understanding that really provides for the connection and the emotional intimacy uh, that that couples really need in their relationship. Yeah, because I know for me, it is, you know, at least in my case, it's hard for me to sometimes communicate even when I'm, especially when I'm angry. 
Uh, and it, it might not even be towards the wife. I'm just angry about a situation or something that happens. Is there a way to communicate that uh, in a way that, you know, you can tell your wife, hey, either give me a moment or here's what's bothering me? Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's really excellent because that's what communication tends to break down is when our emotions hijack what's going on in the communication. So anger is certainly a way that, that, that uh, causes communications to break down. Okay. In the coaching process, one of the things that we really talk about and we really help the couple come to an agreement on how they want to handle each other's anger. Mm -hmm. My guess is that your wife probably knows when you're getting angry before you do. She's been with you long enough. She knows your body languages, your size, whatever's going on. And she can see that you're starting to get a little bit upset. Okay, mm -hmm. I know my wife can see that in me. And I'm not <laughs> even ready to admit that I'm angry yet. Okay, mm -hmm. but if she sees that, she all of a sudden gets really nervous. She, she gets anxious, you know, she gets very dynamic. So what we've really come up with is a play, a way that she can point that out to me that I'm willing to hear so that I can then choose to do something different. So for instance, these are words that I told her to say to me, if you see that I'm getting angry, just share with me what you're observing. I'm observing that your voice is getting louder and I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable. You know, what is upsetting you? And if she asks that and puts it in that format, then I will respond and think about it and try and share with her what's going on. Hmm. So we have an agreement on how we're going to handle anger differently than we might have done before. And it's those agreements that really make for a much better relationship. And let me just share the back behind that. Your wife were born onto different teams called your families of origin. And you learned how to get along in that family of origin. You learned about expectations, about communication styles. You saw how your parents interacted. And some families were more functional than others. But you got married, you created a new team, but you brought your old playbook. And now all of a sudden, the plays that worked for you growing up are not working for you in your marriage. So what coaches do is they help you create new agreements on how you're going to work together to address situations that come up. Um, so anger is one of them. And if you can figure out how to de-escalate before it blows up, you're going to avoid probably several hours of both of you feeling uncomfortable and, and regretful about the situation. And, you know, that is very true. And, and I'm glad you said that. But let me back up a little bit. How did you and your wife really get to that point where you can discuss this and say, this will work for me. This would help me and help us both in our when I whenever one of us is upset or what have you. Yeah. And and really, that's where a coach comes in. Because those couples, the 30% that are talking about divorce, their communication is broken down and, and they find it very difficult to communicate effectively because when they communicate, they push buttons and they don't do a good job of listening to understand and they fall back into those old, old plays that they mm -hmm. brought into the relationship. So with a coach there though, and the, and the, the coach couple sitting right across the table from them, First of all, the couple's gonna be on better behavior. They have learned the skills and the coach is gonna be there to help them apply the skills because just having head knowledge about how to do it isn't gonna make a difference if in fact you're not actually using the skills. Mm -hmm. So when people, when the coaches slow down the process and they, would, you know, like a coach might say to you, Mike, so what did you understand your wife to say? So you were getting all ready to come back and give her your version and you hadn't taken time to convey that you understood her. So the coach would say, so Mike, what did you understand? And then you repeat it and, and you know, you need to ask, did I get that right? And she says, no, you didn't get that right. 
So mm. now, mm. now she has an opportunity to say what, what she really meant or say it in a different way so you really understand her heart and everything. So now what do you understand? So when, when the coach is there to facilitate that process, it prevents the communications from breaking down. And what we find is when people really understand each other, you know, they don't like the results they're getting. They didn't want to make their, their spouse upset with them. Mm -hmm. So when they really understand the, the dynamic and what's going on, they're more than ready to make agreements on about, how, about how to do things differently to get different results. Okay. Now, wouldn't you say this is also an excellent uh, thing to do before you get married? Oh, for sure. Just think if you had, uh, if you understood the playbook concept and you had a, had an opportunity to figure out what's going to happen when you get angry and what what you're going to say to your wife when she gets angry and how you're going to deescalate. Just think of all of the trauma that that would have eliminated uh, in those first few years of marriage, mm -hmm. uh, where you're really starting to figure out how to get along and, and live together. Um, yeah, premarital um, coaching is a wonderful way to get started on the right foot. Yeah, and because you know, I, I, when I was growing up, you used to hear a lot of people say that, at, um, you know, when we get married, we're gonna argue less or he's going to be less angry or she's going to be less angry when we get married. Do you find that to be the case? No. As a matter of fact, you know, the, the biggest challenge with working with premarital couples is they truly believe that they're going to be different than all the other couples in history before them. That, <laughs> you know, everything is so good in their relationship. And it's just going to continue like that. I mean, they can foresee no problems or issues and um, they just love each other so much that they, they overlook those um, things that after marriage become real irritants and sore points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know, you know, one of the things that I, I tell couples or men is you have to communicate even about who's going to take care of the money, how are you going to handle your money? You know, you, whether you're going to have a joint account, separate account, joint account plus separate accounts, whatever. But those kind of things are part of communication, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's interesting about money because really what money reflects is our values. Um, mm -hmm. We spend money uh, based on what our values are. And it's really the communication that, that helps us understand one another's values and why saving is so important for one, whereas spending might be so important for the other. And when you understand, then you can make agreements and you can agree on budgets and you can, can do whatever compromising needs to be done in order to make sure that both uh, individuals' needs and values are being respected. Now, I know infidelity is one of the, in that top two between infidelity and money that will make a marriage end. Doesn't a lack of communication is, can be a cause of infidelity? I guess it can be, but uh, often I think it's, it's more than that. I think it's the fact that um, work environments are, are uh, conducive with, with more women in the work environment today. And um, that makes it more conducive with the values that we have in society, with the way that uh, affairs are presented and the way we're inundated with those kind of values. I think it all just tends to make it easier for people to slide in and slide out of affairs. Um, but certainly if you're communicating well at home, uh, that's and, and meeting each other's emotional needs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the best way to uh, ensure that there's not going to be infidelity in the relationship. Yeah. but And that's what I was thinking. You know, if you can tell your partner what is what you're missing, maybe it's even, you know, the relationship itself. You're not really feeling connected. Uh, you know, that can give an opportunity for somebody to come in and connect with your partner. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, there's a there's a concept that uh, Dr. Steve Stevens wrote a book called The Walkout Woman or The Walkaway Woman. Mm -hmm. And 
and that really talks about women that are at a point in their relationship where they've tried year after year to get the message across to their husband about their needs, their emotional needs, and what and what they need. And effectively, the guy is the husband is tone deaf. Um, mm-hmm. He figures that you know I'm working, I'm providing for the family, I'm doing as much as I can, and he you know tends to spend a lot of time at work. And when he comes home, he's not really focused on on the wife or the family, maybe. And uh, she just gets burnt out and tired of trying to communicate and having a husband who doesn't really understand her. I mean, he hears it, but he just figures, oh, it's normal, and, and he brushes it off. But mm-hmm. he doesn't really understand the impact it's having. And and when that occurs, that's those are the kind of situations that really cause difficulties in marriage. Yeah. So we need to listen as men. We need to learn how to listen and hear and understand what your wife is saying or your uh, partner. Right. You know, and it's interesting, Mike, as we train this, people will come in back to the second weekend of the training and they will say that they use those listening skills uh, with their child or with their teenage son or daughter. And it changes the whole dynamic of the communication. Whereas kids get, might get mad and withdrawn when the parent says, so this is what I understand you saying. And, you know, you know, what else is there? Is there more? You know, and that just draws the, the, uh, the kid out. And all of a sudden they're talking when, you know, they weren't talking to their parents before. Yeah. So it works for families and it works in the workplace, too. I mean, we've had people come back and say, you know, I really listened to understand when my coworker came in and, you know, it really made a difference. We were able to come to a successful resolution, you know, much easier. Yeah. And I would think if you're a supervisor or CEO or a boss, period, in some uh, aspect, you really need to have communication skills and learn to listen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's really what, when you think about people that you respect or that you like, my guess is they're probably pretty good listeners. They probably make you feel like you're understood. Um, so uh, they may not agree with you all the time, but mm-hmm. you, you do feel like you're understood by them. Hmm. So tell us a little bit about your book. I would like to know more and I'd like our audience to know more uh, about your book. Yeah. Well, Rick and Jane learned to listen and talk. It was actually funny. We were at a restaurant. We were talking about it and we sort of said, yeah, you remember those old Rick and Jane readers? And we laughed about it and, and said, yeah, guys don't like reading books. And, you know, we were sort of talking and we actually, you know, got out a napkin and sort of outlined what it might look like. But it's really based on the first coaching session that we have with a couple where we teach the communication skills. So the couple um, will learn the communication skills. And then, as I mentioned, the coach facilitates the application. So what we did was we tried to make it really simple. It takes a minute to read the book and uh, it, it just goes through what that coaching session might look like, how the coaches come alongside you know, train the skill and how Rick and Jane sort of struggle with using it and actually talk over each other. And the coaches have to stop them and make sure they're using the skill appropriately. And then it gets into how do you um, make, um, how do you speak without attacking the other person? Mm -hmm. And it talks about, you mentioned anger and making agreements on how to handle anger differently. Um, So it talks about how you go about making agreements to do things differently. And it shares that uh, playbook analogy. So all of that's done in the first session of coaching, and it really sort of sets the stage because the, co- the, the book helps to reframe people's thinking about the relationship. It's not, it's not, you know, husband against wife. It's a team. When one person's not feeling good, it's the entire team. And, uh, as people start seeing the relationship differently through the eyes of Rick and Jane, all of a sudden, uh, they start to think about their own relationship differently. Okay. So how can they get that book? 
Well, it's available on Amazon and okay. it's on Kindle as well. Um, so, yeah, it's it's easy to order and you know nowadays it can be delivered in a couple of days. All right. Well, that's going to have to be our show for the day. That's our time. But uh, before we go, I would love for you to tell the audience how they can get a hold of you. And you just explained how they can get a hold of your book. But how can they get in touch with you and where you are you nationwide or you just in a certain city? You know, let them know. Yeah. Um, marriage team dot marriage team dot org is the website and uh, they can go there or they can call our uh, number zero five zero six zero four two. That's three six zero four five zero six zero four two so either way they can get in touch with us if they're interested in coaching they can learn more on the website they can even uh go through with the application process on the website and uh, we'll get back in touch with them uh normally within a business day uh to just um, facilitate that process okay well, Al, thank you very much. And it's definitely been a pleasure having you. And, and I know our audience has to learn something from the information you provided. Uh, that was fantastic. And I hope our men can learn to communicate better. If not, they need to call you and get some, some counseling from you and your group of people. So thank you for joining us on The Father Show. And uh, Al, I'm gonna close it out real quick, but and I talk with you here in a second, ladies and gentlemen. That's our show for today. Thank you for joining us. Now, if you need more resources, please go to the Father Show with MikeThompson.com, and you can find resources on there. Just click on resources, then click on your state. Now, I like to tell you. We don't have any cookies on the website, so we don't know you were there. Our purpose is to make sure you have access to resources that can help you be the best man that you can be. Now, you can watch this and other episodes on our YouTube channel, The Father Show with Mike Thompson. While there, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is. And you can also listen to any episode on our Facebook page, on Spotify, Stitcher, Twitter, and Amazon Music and Audible. So you have no reason not to watch. And we're gonna be available for you, for you in every way that we possibly can. So I'm so happy you joined us today. So until next week, God bless and please Learn to communicate better. It's going to make your marriage better. And who wouldn't want that? God bless you. Mm -hmm.